to fumigate the whole barn and then bounce to the graveyard. You just walk in and jump into the hole? I'll walk it down here. The floor cracks and starts to cave in. The tractor's tire gives away. Hurry, Mr. Teller. There's a dog standing not too far from the side doors. It is clearly skeletal remains. Spiders and cockroaches and ants and termites. And they're just curling out and they're coming up the side of the barn. It's about the size of an outhouse, the side closest to the barn is actually angled down and it forms like a ramp going down to the ground. So. Or an entrance way to some underground something. Take a quick peek at that. We about to find some possible bad juju, my friends. Roy, you make your way over to this building. It doesn't take you very long. It's not, it's like 60 feet away. It's not, it's not a huge distance. There's a little bit of a fence between the barn and the, the, uh, the field. And you just hop over it pretty quickly and get to the other side. You make your way over to it. And when you do, you see this is a brick and wooden structure. So there is the walls are brick. There is, uh, the angled wall is wood, but there is a metal double door uh, inset into it going down at an angle. Kind of like you would see like in a storm cellar type thing. The, uh, there is a, the doors themselves are red and painted over red, and there's splotches of rust coming through it. There are two big handles you can pull open. There is a shiny chain strung through those handles, and what appears to be a relatively new padlock is on it. How tough looking is this padlock? The padlock itself looks pretty strong. The handles okay. that it's running through look like they've been weathered for quite a bit. All right, I was hoping that you were going to say a plastic padlock, but I can absolutely just rip the handles off of this thing. Uh, you do have a crowbar. I got a crowbar and a couple tools in my belt. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pop muscles of iron. Let's see if I can do this. There's that. For the next 10 minutes, all might-based actions other than attack rolls you attempt are eased. I could use my one cipher, but I'll hold on to it. That would just make it last for an hour instead. Of... Okay, cool. That sounds that sounds pretty good. So you're going to ease this for the next 10 minutes. Uh, go ahead, and this, this is going to be a four or better uh, uh, difficulty. So it's a 12. You're easing it, so it's going to make it a three. And I'm going to apply me one bit of effort, so it's down to a two. So anything better than a six is going to pop this open. I think I did that right. I think I made it. Yeah, All right. So look at that. Got a six exactly what you needed on that one. Put that crowbar in there. Just heave backwards. All right. You heave back and the handle on the one side just snaps off and falls to the ground. Uh, it doesn't even hang on the chain. And once you break it off that door, there's no, there's just the back of it's wide open, and so it just falls onto the ground. The chain is just dangling there, and you hear an echo sound of the crash from the uh, as the handle breaks and the ch chain clatters to the ground. It kind of echoes uh, from within the chamber beyond. I'm gonna go ahead and reach down and pick up that uh, handle. Okay. I'm gonna turn around, smile, look at the others. What are y'all worried for? I got a handle on things. Okay. There's just that. <laughs> uh, I just smile. Yeah. He's worth every penny. <laughs> just, just like. Box gets it. Box gets it. And I would throw the handle down the stairs before pulling out my flashlight, the 22. So you're going to open the door up? Yeah. Okay. You open the door up, and there are stairs that go down probably about 15 feet. And uh, the stone, the, the stairs are stone. Like they are just random stones that have been stuck together and pounded flat into the earth. The walls of this chamber, as you get below ground, are just natural earth. There's no, there's no stone or woodwork on the sides. Oh, this and, is an old school root cellar. And it's pretty dark down there. Your light lets you see down uh, to the bottom of the stairs without any problem. And 
Yeah, there's a... Hard to see too so much from where you're on the top, but you I, could I, descend I, in. So you, you, you see I, the bottom, though. Like I say, it goes like 15, 20 feet down, and then yeah. you see the bottom. Like I said, I am going to toss that handle down there, the metal handle, just to see if anything stirs. Okay, cool. You toss it down the uh, the down to the bottom, and it clangs around as it hits the bottom, and it echoes a little bit. But nothing seems to come. Nothing seems to be stirring inside. Nothing's running at you. All right. It is a little cool. You can feel the cool breeze coming out of this, though. As you open the door, you can feel the coolness coming from out, uh, outside, from inside. I, as he kind of does that, I want to use anecdote and be like, remember, Mister Teller, the Abernathy estate where they had the the septic tank that backed up. Don't linger. We're just going in and out. So you get plus two to anything except attack and defense. Cool. And remember that those those things do cost points. So like, there's a Correct. two point input, like cost on those. Yeah, we're using those. Yep. Awesome. Um, is there a way, like, I don't know how to express the, like, bang on side of flashlight to see if it works again. But Are you going to do that on the ladder? To... Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You, you smack the side of it, and it does come back on. So it's, okay. I was going to say, you have to smack it against Ty Tyrell's head to make it work again. <laughs> so you get a pair of the no. off switch. But, uh, it's oh. payback for you beating the rest. <laughs> That yep. you. I was gonna say, did you see a wrath? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, karma from Ducky. All right, I'm gonna grab the camera from yeah. Mr. Knox here. And Stuff. what is uh, what is uh, Roy trained in? Yeah, uh, now, yeah Duncan. Now Duncan Duncan uses an antidote to, so you can be trained in an action for the next hour. Yeah. So what's the skill, boss? Running away. I was going to do, like, either evasion or, in my mind, it was, like, shove or, like, like football just getting through the line. Like, so it would be... Make a hole? We'll say make a hole? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, just pushing through. Bulldozing. Like evasion, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Bulldozing. Like that. That, that sounds exactly what was that? Bulldozing. 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 Okay, we'll take bulldozing. That that kind of fits with you as well. In fact, I think that fits well enough with your background that we would say that that makes you not just trained with it, but skilled with it. So it would ease any task associated with that, that uh, not just by one, but by two. That's fantastic because my only actual trained skill is might defense. I have nothing else. <laughs> uh, so if you need to push through right. something, you can definitely push through it at this point. All right. Flashlight in one hand, 22 in the other, make my way down them steps. Tell me what the rest of you are doing as you see Roy open this uh, cellar door and pull out his flashlight and his gun and to start descending down into it. You are on one side of the fence, close to 60 feet away from him, watching him go down. Huh. As, as much as I let Mr. Taylor do a lot of my stuff, I'm never going to leave him hang, so I would be kind of like at the entrance with my knife drawn, just kind of like listening down for any kind of like sign. And so I, I probably... You, you've crossed over the fence and you're, you're... I would have been right with him right up to the door, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would you hold the lantern if I gave it to you so she could put both hands on her gun? Yeah. Okay. Because I, I seem to be missing a flashlight. I'm not sure where it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, funny story about that. See, I'm sure it's just in your pocket, but you know, I'll grab it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lantern. Hmm? I said, say you got a concussion from the lantern. <laughs> That's why you forgot. Yeah. I'm ready to get spooky. Okay. And uh, Tyrell and Amaya, what are you doing at, at this point? You've I, apparently have gone closer because you brought the, the lantern over to Duncan. Are you all over by that entrance as well? Yeah, but Tyrell is contemplating if he's done enough for a while. <laughs> uh, I'll be up in a second. Don't worry. Okay. Roy, you descend down into it. You get to the bottom of it. When you get to the bottom, you find that the cavern you open, it appears to be like a natural stone cavern as you get down here. Uh, the 
ground is more stony, rocky, almost has been cut into it. Uh, there are uh, probably about eight foot tall, the ceiling height in here. Ground is relatively smooth, but it is just dirt, earth in here. You see the waxy remains of five candles. They're standing around at the edge yep. of a circle, and the circle is painted on the stone floor. There's a series of squares and triangles that have been placed in a pattern around the inner edge of the circle, and the center of the ring is in a mound of dirt. A folded card table stands a few feet away with a half dozen unused candles and a knife resting on it. Okay. Um, like I said, didn't matter what's down here. We're putting the camera up and we're leaving. I'm going to... I'm going to pocket one of those black candles. Or are, they, are they black candles on the table? There are black candles on the table, and there are black candles on the floor. The black candles on the floor have actually been burning, have burned at some point. They, they're they about halfway burned through. The ones on the table are fresh candles unused. Uh, Roy don't know nothing about no juju. That's Maya's field. He's going to let her know about that when he comes up. I'm going to take an unburned one. I'm not going to mess with the circle. Okay. Uh. The knife and everything else is going to go onto the floor. I'm going to shuffle that table into the corner, set the camera on it. I, I'm going to not. I'm not going to set down my gun. I'm going to set down the flashlight, kind of facing towards me. When okay, so I you're you're dumping out. everything off the table onto the floor, and just moving the the table over so you can put the camera on top of it. Yeah, I want to have them instead of having just like ground view. I want them to be able to see kind of like waist height throughout the room. Okay. Do you have any way to see how you're focusing that camera while you're in there? What did we? Do you have a phone, Duncan? Some uh, equipment in the house. Mine? Can you use mine to like set up a viewing? I have a. Cell I phone. have a cell phone. I just right. I could call somebody. Oh, your whole setup's back at the house. You'd have to be all the way back there to check. Yeah. I, I do not have a way to check really. Okay, so you're just gonna, you're gonna like do your best eyeballing to see how like, this works, right? I can right? see the camera. Pretty much, yeah. All I right. just, for the most part, I want to face it towards the circle in the room. Okay, uh, just make an intellect roll. There isn't really a difficulty on this one. I'm just kind of this will just be future reference to see how well you aimed it. So the higher you do, the better aiming you're doing. Hmm. Oh, boy. So, so there's no there's no real risk associated with this. It's not like the building's gonna collapse on you if you. Zero on roll <laughs> As far as you know. When, when is failing an inner like roll ever collapse a building? It's probably fine. <laughs> submit, submit. Am I smart? Okay, so you got an eight on your intellect roll. You're trying to aim it over there. Uh, you fiddle with it a few times, and you're just like, like, is that good? Is that good? And you finally says, ah, oh, forget about it. It's good enough. The boss can the <laughs> boss can adjust it one on this computer. Uh, <laughs> It'll see something. And that's one of the things you do remember is that with some of the cameras he has, he had, does have the ability to kind of fine tune the alignment of it. So you think it got it kind of close, probably not perfect, but hopefully close enough that he can make it work from once he get on the computer with it. Okay. It is All considerably right. cooler in here as you come, uh, as you're in here, you notice it's cooler, but you're underground and kind of expect it to be a little cooler. It's not like unusual. It's not like unnaturally cold down here. It's just a little bit cooler. Oh, I think that Roy is being by himself is actually going to like let some panic show through a little bit. As soon as that camera's down and I'm decently confident. Flashlights back in my hand and I'm probably going to back towards the steps. Yeah, there's a glint of something metallic in the mound of dirt in the middle of the circle. Oh, I know this is dumb. <laughs> uh, run, grab it, just up the steps like a kid running away from something. So you're going to run across the circle, into the center of it, grab something, and run out. I'm trying not to step on any lines, if I can. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I kind of understood what's going on. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so this There's would be, I think this would be like a balance or a balance roll. So this would be a speed roll with a balance or coordination if you have something that can help you out with that. I don't believe I do. Okay. Bulldozers are very balanced. 
I was going to say Roy is probably a bull in a china shop. Yeah, now, if you wanted to just bowl through here and just destroy the entire thing, that would be no. – like, I wouldn't even make you roll for it. You could do that without any problem with all the – Perks you have right My now. goal is to do as little damage as possible because okay. I don't know what screwing up the circle could do. Yeah, so it's four or better, twelve. Yeah, do a roll of 12, twelve or better to avoid disturbing the circle and grabbing the thing you want to grab out of the center. I'm gonna put in another point of F. And it is you've gotta be a speed based roll. Yeah. Uh, how much does it cost to use it? It's a three for one effort, right? Yeah, uh, one effort would cost three points of speed. M minus any edge you might have. I do not. That is straight and strength, buddy. Oh, that's not good. We will say on the plus side, at least it is not a one. No. It's just time. <laughs> so, uh, and you truly have angered the guys gods tonight. I don't know what you guys did. <laughs> So you come into the you go into the ring and you step across it, and as you do, when the candles get kicked in and scuttles uh, cuddles underneath the table as you move, you reach for the mound of dirt. You slip and you stumble forward. The mound of dirt gets spilled over. You grab the piece of metal that's on top of it. As you do it, you realize it's the pocket watch that you saw in the pictures. And it st fumbles out of your hand and it starts bouncing and you're trying to juggle it and it slips out of your hand and falls. You hear a disturbing crack come from it. Ah. But you manage to pick it up and grab it and run out of the room. Flashlight in hand. Yeah. Sorry, Maya, you're gonna have a hard time reading whatever's left of this. It was like that it was like that when he found it. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to, like, hoof it up the stairs. The last two I'm going to do my best to try and pretend to calm down. I absolutely have, like, dirt on my knees. Out of breath. Probably a little wild-eyed. <laughs> like, just, right. just come out stretching. Ugh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's still flashlight gun in hand until I'm, like, back by. I was like, all right. Uh, definitely where the ritual was. Um... Here, you have these. I'm going to immediately hand the candle and uh, – was it, you said it was a locket or a uh, – It's a pocket watch. It's a pocket watch. Pocket watch, yes. Sorry. Over to Amea. It's like this one wasn't used down there. There was some extras. I don't know if you could tell how bad it is. I don't know. She's not – well, I mean she is psychic, but she's not a psychic. Yeah, I to Roy that is like good enough. He's okay. like no clue. That's fine. I just don't want to promise anything that she's not Roy, actually yeah. able to deliver. No, I know. Roy's um, probably like mildly superstitious, so like if you say you hear stuff, he's like, Okay. I believe you. You probably know what you're doing more than I do. I don't uh, think she has anything specifically for dealing with the occult, and I am sorry about that. Um good. We know where but we I up. will, yeah, I was going to say, I'll, I'll take the candle and the, the pocket watch, and we will go continue to do stuff once we get back into the room set up with the cameras. Okay. And she'll look yeah. more into that. Um, I, I did see, pretty sure the knife he used was also down there. I ain't take that with me. That may be for the best. Hold on one second. Yeah. I'm looking back through to grab the message with the diary page. Oh, that's not on Discord. We had this problem last time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's in Roll20. It's a handout yeah. in Roll20. Wait, All is right. it? It's in Roll20, yeah. Okay. It's under the journal. It's, uh... Yeah, I got it. Pages from the mm -hmm. notebook. Yeah. yeah. You got the candles, the knife. Some important. Flowers. The lead. And we got the dirt. So we know where everything is. We just kind of have to decide what we're going to do from here, I think. Yeah. The, the, the drawing of the blood thing makes me personally, not necessarily the character, nervous. And I wanted to, like, think if we could do an alternative to that. But sometimes, you know, there isn't. Especially when dealing with, like, magical, spiritual things. So. Well, I think we're just trying to break that. Well, I, if it's breaking the circle, Roy did that. Problem solved, y'all. But something tells me no. 
yeah. I think we're trying to undo whatever magic happened down there, so we gotta... Right, because I was gonna say, those don't necessarily need to be the same thing. Like, you could have broken the circle and just unleashed whatever it was instead of... Like, oh no, Roy's probably caused process. something bad. Yeah. I bulldozed indeed. Um, But that's what I'm gonna <laughs> do while you're doing the camera work. I don't know if we're doing stuff in between now and then, but... I think with the storm rolling in, it's probably time to hop in the house for the night. It's getting dark any who's. Yeah, I I think by the time you get into the house, you can hear the rain has started to fall. Okay. Man, right. this is different. I get to be inside when it's raining. I'm like, work. <laughs> There's a moment of like, oh, poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's allowed to have an umbrella. <laughs> I'm talking about real life work. <laughs> I stand outside counting cars in the rain all the time. Oh, I feel no. like we've just made this canon, though. <laughs> Roy absolutely <laughs> probably doesn't have an umbrella. He's like, nah. <laughs> I gotta have both hands ready. <laughs> I offered you, like, no, no, no. Can't. Nah, you have to buy your own. Stop it. Mr. Teller you won't wear those ponchos because they look dorky. No, uh, Mr. Knox makes me sleep in a box. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a great boss. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess we could go see what you can peek through your camera. I, the camera's got infrared or something, night vision. There'd be, like, I would imagine it would be night vision. It would only make sense. It's at least as efficient as the baby monitor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, I would like to fail around with my, my monitor and see how well this is set up and what I can see in there. Uh, Tyrell, with all the strange comings and goings on, you want to, like, help me maybe barricade some doorways? Not all of them. We yes. Escape route. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, probably, like, ground floors and then whichever rooms we use. Yeah. And Close them off. Remember, there is a lot of boxes and crates that are in the entranceway. That could be yeah. used for something like that. And you also have a pretty good workbench and some shelving down in the uh, basement if you wanted to use that. Plus, you have normal furniture and those type of things. Right. Yeah. Because we're going to still need, like, make it either on us at least. Yeah. If we if we need to, like, remove for any reason. So tell me a little hey. bit of how you're going to do this barricading. Kind of describe it to me. Give me a montage. I would say... I'm almost – we probably could use more of, like, the furniture in front of, like, doorways and stuff. Yep. I would almost furniture. say if we can take the shelving apart, is it, like, metal shelves or wood shelves? It is wood shelves. Is it out wood? Yeah, down in the basement, it is wooden shelves. Uh, but they, they are, they're, they're basically just planks on some little cr uh, cross beams. You can just lift them. Like, you have a lot of jars on them. You have to take all the jars off them, stack them somewhere, but you could just pick them up. Uh, if if there's nails down here, yes. board up the windows. At least the ground floor windows. Yes. Makes sense. Your, your then, realtor friend who sent you down here to check the place out is going to be thrilled with your renovations <laughs> as you start hammering well, <laughs> things into the wall. Yo. Um, yeah, do, do we have... Go ahead. Do we have his number or something? Because... It is like nightfall, and we were expecting him a while ago. Yeah. Oh, the inspector. I thought he wasn't coming until tomorrow. The next day. Yeah. Oh, I am thinking I'll see you ahead of time. I think yeah. you knew he was going to meet you here, whether it was going to be later today or tomorrow. I don't know that we ever really made that clear. Okay. Oh, okay. In my we mind, it was that stuff. day. But... We did see his stuff. His stuff is the here. amount. Of the amount of hazard that we've been through in the last couple of hours alone, I think it justifies a little renovation. I will pay for the wood putty to fill the holes. It's not that bad. I was going to say, Scratches we have like a tractor in the, in the um, no, we basement. Hole in the floor. We never was... touched that, okay? We heard that fall in the night. Let's get the story straight. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, the boards <laughs> on the wall will probably be fine. <laughs> whole place probably needs to come down anyways so with fur fire so furniture no. across the doorways you're using uh getting some planks to put the across the windows 
make a quick phone call. Hey, do you have insurance on this place? No reason. <laughs> Lighting um, the match. <laughs> yeah, everything that's that's heavy, he'll definitely like place in front of a door, but not too heavy. So we're really if we need to like make a quick exit, we can't just get out of which, the way. Which door are we? We should probably agree on which door is the quick exit. Do we want that oh. back door or the front door or? Maybe into maybe how about the one into the garage and out that way? I don't I did we map out enough of the backyard to make that the escape one? I don't, I don't think we've really that. been there. Well because like that that door, that corridor towards the garage, that's where we originally came in and like that's where that like mc where our our first little setup area was that door just there. Yeah, I would so yeah, on the east side of the house the is the, to the car. is the laundry room and the garage and the the bedroom where you have all the cameras set up, and also okay. the entrance to the basement and the kitchen. I would say since the laundry room's closest to the, our rooms where we're crashing, maybe. Or no, are those up on the second floor? I'm trying to remember. Um, you're all, you're all on the first floor. You really haven't done much with the second floor. The second floor is pretty much empty uh, rooms. Except the except the one room where they those photos. That's even that, that's even on the downstairs. That's the 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 far left door. So I'm just okay. paying on our bedroom. I'm just paying it on the yeah. Okay. That's that's the master room on the one next to the bath. Okay, so yeah, I would say probably the laundry room since we're stuck pretty well to the ground floor. And then maybe we only put like, oh I would say we just do the old like uh, dining room chair underneath the doorknob, like that way it's not something hefty that Tyrell or I have to move out of the way. So nice. That way, if it's Duncan or Amaya coming through, yeah, that's that works really well. So heavier stuff around the other doors, but the doors you might need to move, you're gonna just do the chair wedge underneath the doorknob to kind of make it easy to move them around. Yep, perfect. All right, is, and as Tyrell and Roy are moving around, going through the house, trying to barricade it, trying to make it safe uh, from things, Amaya and Duncan, you are looking at your different things. You're looking at the things that you have. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Duncan, you were going to go look at the camera equipment first. Is that correct? Yes. So uh, it is not at an ideal position. Uh, Roy just dropped it down there, and it's kind of tilted on its side. Uh, you're not even sure he would do it, it, which side was up when he put it down there, <laughs> but it's it's in a position where you can use your little remote and kind of adjust the angle of the lens a little bit, and uh, it it's definitely dark down there. Things are like gray. You're seeing like shades of gray. It's pretty much what you're going to see down there. Uh, and then what the, when those different shades of gray though, you can make out the circle in the center of the floor, you can make out that the room is looks to be empty. There doesn't seem to be anything uh, going in or out of the room. And you can see the stairs leading up toward the uh, entranceway. Um, Does your camera come with sound? Ooh, that's a good question. The bad um, part of me wants to point out how many business securities come with act or uh, like business security cameras actually come with sound. I don't think I want to have sound though. Yeah, I think you actually have to do an upgrade for it. Yeah. As far as the. So, do you carry your like the the nice equipment out to this mission, or is this like a run of the mill stuff you took with you? Um, I I don't know. I'm torn because like. I have a mon like a like a thirty dollar camera for my dog that has sound. It mm -hmm. seems wild that if I'm in the security business, I wouldn't have something good. You could order yeah. like cameras off Amazon with good sound quality for less type of stuff for a couple hundred bucks. I just re the first thing that came through my head was like every time I've seen security camera footage, there's never been sound with it. But I also it's always like Walmart or fast food places, so maybe that's not the best comparison. Well, because I think I, I think that's just like that's like a scale thing. Whereas, yeah. like, if this this is our business, is doing these types yeah. of things. Like, I, I think it would make sense that we would have it, especially if we're doing these types of. Yeah, yeah I'm perfectly okay with that. Like, my business has sound and a security system. So. Mm -hmm. My dog has one, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's thirty dollars, so. 
Now, now, can you talk uh, through your dog's camera? Yeah, I can. So you can make it seem like your dog's talking to people? To kind of mess with is he Is he like Doug, oh. from, Doug from Up? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I guess I could do that, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I love um, how like I watched that like that has never crossed my mind. Followed by technically, I could probably do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm, um, no, I, I would like to see that. Yeah, so I would be kind of like keep. Or I'd be looking around to see like what path, like because the candles on the ground to try and see what kind of pattern we're looking at there. I know there's like a dirt sand in the or based on the letter there's. Uh, a dirt in the middle with the trinket, which I'm assuming is the um, pocket watch. Pocket watch. watch that got taken out already. So I guess I want to see like what kerfuffle he did that caused there, and then like looking at the blade that should be around there as well. That I know Mr. Taylor said. Okay, cool. I just need you to make a uh, d20 roll again. This is just to kind of see where the ca the blade fell when Roy just kicked it over. It's not really. There's no real risk of this. It's just whether you're going to be able to see the blade through the camera, because it was on the top of the table and he dipped it onto the floor. Okay, and that is a five. All right. We're going golf rules, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. So as you you rolled the five on that one, so as you're looking around, you can you've seen the the notebook, you've seen the diagram in the notebook. This clearly is the diagram. This matches the diagram in the notebook, except for the footprint that's smeared across part of the paint where you, uh, it's just a dirty footprint on there. The paint was dry, it didn't wear off, but he did smear across it. One of the candles has been putted across the room. The dirt is like smeared out all over the place, whether that's the intention of it or not. It was a nice, neat pile in the drying you saw, but it's kind of spread it out all over the place. You can just base, barely make out the, the, the handle of the knife uh, through the camera, trying to adjust it through. You can see the handle for it. And it looks like uh, almost like one of these knives that were made out of like uh, some type of animal antler or horn. Like yeah, uh, like this a uh, smooth carved, uh, kind of whitish yellow, uh, mm -hmm. bone hilted handle. You you can't really see the blade though. It does fit in what you would expect somebody like uh, Wallace Amherst to have in his possession though. Okay. You can hear the sound of the rain beating against the the metal door leading down to that cellar. As you're looking at it. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna keep an eye on all the different cameras just to see. Actually, I want to go back and, and, um, see a little bit more of what that, that dog that was doing around that shed, just to kind of, like, see if I, on the camera, it would be able to catch it moving around or going, or if it was just the same thing as, like, the, the woman where it just, it was there, it wasn't. You're going to go back to the recording? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You you don't have any trouble finding the recording on that of the dog going through it, and you do see the dog circling around the place, and it does appear to just be a normal dog. It's not it's not doing anything strange. It's not hazy or misty. It's not obscuring the camera as it goes through it. Uh, but there is a moment where the dog looks up, and you can see it from the the distance, and there's a glimmer in its eyes, and it might just be a trick of the light. But it might not. And Amaya, you're looking at the you have the watch in your, with you. Tell me what you want to do with it. Um, I hadn't actually thought about that because I had plans to do other stuff. Okay, tell now... me. Well, tell me what else you want to do. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Ignore, ignore um, the watch. Throw it in the trash. Was... I don't care. <laughs> no, don't throw it in the trash. Um, I already broke it. Well. What I was going to do is I was going to send an email to our psychic friend with, like, the the journal entry, the watch, if we can grab stills from the ritual site um, to see if she has, A, an alternative to, like, the blood sacrifice to make it, like, a little bit more, like, 
less less culty, more holy. Um, I don't know how else to describe that other than that. And tell me how um, you want to use this ritual. You, you're you, you're asking her for advice on the ritual. What's your goal once you do something different with the ritual? What do you want to accomplish? So I do want it to be like a ceiling, like to put. Um, I'm gonna get her name right. Um, Are you? Yes, I am. I'm going to. I'm not going to because her character sheet isn't where I can see it. <laughs> is it been? Is it been? Uh, it's, what's her it's name? Close, but Tina. It's, it's Tina. like uh, it's like. Are you talking about the the person you're you you trying to send the email to, or the person that Wallace was kind of going his grave you wanted to go to? Uh, no, uh, Batima is the one. So she's gonna write the email to. Um, have her name written down too. As you can see, my memory is that of a goldfish. Uh, let me just go back and check my notes. I'm sorry. Would Clarice Winterborn be the one you're looking for? Yes, that, that is, is her name. That's the other name. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. We also have the gal that runs the occult shop in town. No, I thought we were going to do Clarice because she was actually on the site. Like she I'm was just saying, here. I'm just saying if she doesn't have a, like an answer, we have another that, out. You know? That's true. Um, uh, I might have something. I'm not sure. I just hit my feet. I will be back in just a second. Take your time. So basically the email she types is like, this is from the site that you were visiting earlier that I called you about. Um, it seems that the owner may have performed a ritual without proper knowledge and bindings. Uh, here for, attached are photos of the ritual site as well as the um, likely performed ritual. Um, is there anything we can do to reverse this process or is there anything that we can do to help cleanse this site? Okay. Send that email out. No. Do you want to attach the video of her, of the, the ghost we saw earlier too? Or do you want to just leave it as just the things that you could plausibly deny later? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I would want to try and keep the. I would instinctually, I'd want to keep that between us. Okay. But I would definitely defer to your like whether you trust this person or not. Like, I definitely yeah, that's would why trust... I rolled the twenty. I was like, do I trust her? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, I would definitely trust your judgment for who to share that with. But I would be like, let's not share with anybody. And you're like, what's going to this person? I'd be like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I trust your judgment on occult stuff only because Roy would probably Roy would probably choose a magic eight ball over his own judgment on this. <laughs> okay, so we did get good vibes. So yes to the photos, maybe no to the video evidence. We could do like mm. maybe send then it. that way you can be about, like, ha ha, it was a joke. I've got an idea. What if we? Don't send any of the video, but maybe we'd be like, hey, we found, you know, this note and like maybe cut out the part of. I don't want to cut about the part about, you know, blood, but that's kind of the important one. Yeah. Like we don't tell her that we actually found this stuff, but we do show her like, hey, it looks like he may have done this. Yeah. And then we just leave out the pictures of the actual ritual site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm cool with that plan. My only concern is, is that if we leave out the pictures of the actual ritual site and he did something, like he messed up something before you ran through it, that she might be able to catch it. I mean, I already bulldozed the site before we had pictures, I think. But knowing what that, she might have insight on what that bulldozing means. Yes. Fair point. Mm -hmm. We can blame him. We can blame the screwed up circle on him, too. Stop it. I gotta be we, we found we, it we, like this. We found it like this. I cannot. Um, okay, so yes to the pictures, no to the video, yes to the general question. 
is what I'm hearing. Yeah. That's okay. good to find out. All right. So that's what I'm going to send off in the email. And it's got like a sh- lots of sugs and darlings and honeys and give me a call back when you get a sec. But it's sent like urgent at like 1030. <laughs> All right. So you you sent your email out. Uh, you guys have finished barricading the door. Uh, Duncan, you are still looking at the camera equipment going through it. And as you are looking at the camera equipment going through, there's the rain pittering all th- outside. You can see it. There's uh, no sign of the dogs or anything like that. Uh, the barn looks very odd through the camera. It's almost like there is a, I don't want to say haze or a mist, but it almost looks like the barn, the walls of the barn are kind of moving and shifting a little bit as you're looking at it. In the cameras? In the cameras. The the other thing you notice is the sound of rain coming from the ritual site has stopped. I'm assuming that's the one you have sound on and the other ones do not have sound because it'd probably be overwhelming to have everything with sound on. Mm. So Yeah, especially if it's that thing. Yeah. So outside okay. you can still see it's raining. You can hear the rain in the house, but there's no rain coming from no sound of rain coming from the ritual site. Um I'd kind of like I'd call out like, uh, I think this barn might come down tonight. I can see it moving. Yeah. Um, and, and when I say you see it moving, it's not like waving. Like it's not shaking back and forth. It's almost like watching like a field of grass and you can see the wind blowing across the grass. There's just this light rippling motion oh. in the wood. I would I would call a Maya over and be like, are Maya's playing tricks on me? Um, so she would probably look at the screen and go, Shig, um, are your cameras broken? These are these are uh, I I calibrate these every week myself. There is some water on the rain, lenses from the rain, but you don't think this is rain distortion. You don't think this is water distortion. You think there's something going on out there. <laughs> Why is my first instinct to just shoot the barn and see if it stops in one spot? Stop it! <laughs> How far away from the full moon are we again? I, I think we decided it was a full moon. I don't, I don't... Is the full moon tonight? Did we make Did that we distinction? Even with the cloud cover? I don't. I don't remember that. Yeah, I, I remember don't... it was coming up. I don't think we really decided how far you are from the next. Yeah. Day. Thinking back, I don't think we did it at all. Okay. Well, well, when did this, when do we think this ritual happened? Because the ritual specifically has a moonless night. So. Oh, I'm sorry, not the full moon, the new moon. So, but, uh, yeah. based on, based on the journal entries that you saw in the, uh, the last journal entry you saw on the notebook was three days before uh, Wallace passed away, which was still about a week before the the new moon would have hurt, came in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so whatever he, if he tried something, it was not during the new, the new moon was not quite up when he did it. But do we know the moon cycle tonight? I imagine you could, Google that one and figure out when the next new moon is. You got your devices over there. Um, Roy doesn't believe in Google. If he can't see the moon, it doesn't exist that night. <laughs> that cloud cover, he literally looks up and he goes, meh. So uh, based on what your your instinct is, that you are probably a couple of days away from the new moon coming. You know, okay. not, It's not tonight. It's not a full moon. A couple of days away from it. Uh, okay. But I don't know that, I mean, without making a roll or some type of researching, checking or things, it's a couple of days, you know, anywhere between three to five days. Okay. Um, not tonight is good. I think we will wait until the morning to see if the moon phase is still going to be relevant after the email. Okay. Um, or if she hasn't responded either way. But for right now, um, just it won't be tonight is enough. 
<laughs> and uh, Amaya, as you're kind of talking about that and thinking that through, you're looking at the camera lens and there is a termite that scurries across the lens for an instant and it's gone. So like you'll see her like looking deeply into the cameras, like trying to inspect and see what's going on with like the barn. And then the termite runs across and she like almost throws herself into the wall behind her. Yes. <laughs> Amaya, if I had to catch you one more time today. Yeah. And seeing that termite run across the lens makes you think that maybe the barn isn't actually moving, but it's covered in so many insects and bugs and critters that it is like got it's moving. It's the the bugs crawling across it in the rain are what's causing the disturbance. I that's I knew it. That's why I wanted to shoot the barn. <laughs> I wanted to see. <laughs> If a bunch of bugs would scurry out from the one spot and it'd be still. Um, I have to go home. I have the flu. <laughs> that is certainly an option. You do have an SUV parked out front. <laughs> I am sick. I'm 90% so sure Roy has the keys, though. I was the driver. That's yeah. true. But also, <laughs> I'm sick. I <laughs> should go home. You should really lay down and get some rest. Travel is not advised when you're ill. No, she's Why not going to say that out loud. <laughs> she's not going to say that in character. I'm just like, oh, the barn is covered in bugs and we have to go back in there. <laughs> uh, Roy was ready to shut you down. He's like, nope. There's Speaking of, tank Roy is ready on. to shut down himself. But not uh, Roy's uh, going to trash in a room. Not only is it covered in bugs, it's covered in bugs in the middle of a rainstorm. In a place time when you would expect the bugs to scurry for cover, mm -hmm. these are nope. not. I, as I see that, I'll, I want to switch the audio to the barn. Okay. Do I hear? Yeah, ringing? there is a strange clicking and chittering sound coming from the barn. Can I make out what that that sound is? Like, is it like a specific, is it uh, termite sounds that I'm hearing? I'll roll for it. Go ahead, make a roll. Uh, intellect roll. I, I think that I think this will be a five or better to clearly identify the level five to clearly identify what the sounds are. Um, I will take an effort and I'll do identify. Okay, I'm trained. So, so that, that gets you that gets you down to a level three. So you only need a nine or better. And you've rolled an 18. Finally, someone rolled something that's high enough to actually count. I got a 20. I got a 20 that's earlier. not true. I've rolled two 19s. They haven't counted for anything, <laughs> but I have rolled two of them. I, I saw that. You were just wasting those good rolls. <laughs> it might be useful somewhere else. No, she was rolling to be brave. I was. I was rolling to be brave. <laughs> so, yeah, Duncan, you... Uh, you realize it's not just one insect sound. It's the sound of multiple insects. The sounds of cockroaches scurrying around. The sounds of the termites. You even hear what sounds like the buzzing of a bee or a hornet uh, in the background. And as you're looking at the camera, you realize that the creatures on the barn are not just on the barn. In fact, it appears maybe they're moving away from the barn. As the ground between the barn and the house starts to sh move and shimmer as the creatures start coming in your direction. And you can hear and you can hear the sound not just from the camera, but through the walls, through the windows as they come closer. Um I am going to calmly, but firmly, we need to get out of this house right now. Yeah. Roy um, was like halfway to taking a boot off, so you get to hear him curse again as he starts <laughs> to like back up. He's like, dude, I was just about to hit the bed. We, we've got millions and millions of, of company coming over, and I don't want to host all of them. 
grab You'll anything you need. We're probably not coming back in here tonight. I'm gonna uh, go pull the SUV around. I'm I'm getting out the Tyrell. Um, how much of that spray do you have left? Uh, it, he kind of like, kind of shakes it like three quarters. Time for a help. Uh, about three quarters, give or take. 